In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to simulate an electro-permanent magnet using ANSYS Maxwell. Usually in an EPM, there will be two magnets. One is a soft magnet, which will be easy to be demagnetized and magnetized. The other one will be a hard magnet, which will be difficult to demagnetize. And there will be some coils around these two magnets. The current will flow into these coils and there will be two magnetic plates connected to these magnets. So this is the initial model that we're going to model without the current. So this one is the um, soft magnet and below is a hard magnet and there will be two magnetic plates and also at the bottom is also a magnetic plates. So in this case there will be no current in those windings and both of these magnets were magnetized in the opposite direction. After running the simulation we can check the B fields. We can see the flux will mainly go through the bottom one and into the top one again and the flux going into these air gaps will be very small. And if we calculate the force on the bottom plate we can see that both the force in the x direction and y direction they're almost zero which means that in this initial plate this epm is turned off and we will input a pulse current into the coils to demagnetize this soft magnet so in this case there will be two windings who will carry some current so the value defined here is a variable here so and in this variable, I used a data set to control the current pulse. We can check the data set here. So in this case is most of the time the current is zero in the coils, but at some point there will be a huge pulse current input in this coil so that the soft magnet will be demagnetized. And if we want to calculate the demagnetization, we need to make sure that we check this compute demagnetized operating points under the excitations. And then after running the simulation, we can check the B fields for this magnet. So this is the fields at time zero. There is no current input into the coils. And if we look at the animation here, we can see how the field is changing with time. So initially, it was like 0.4 Tesla. And then in the middle, there is a current input that's decreasing. And then at the end, even there is no current at 1.5 second we can see that the B field is zero everywhere. So which means that now this magnet is fully demagnetized. So due to the huge pulse current, this soft magnet will be demagnetized and then it will be magnetized again in the opposite direction. So again, we have the same current here. It's a huge current in the coils. And then in order to do the magnetization, we need to make sure that we check this box, compute magnetized operating points, and also select the parts that we want to magnetize it. In this case, it's a soft magnet. And then we can run the simulation. After it is done, we can see the B fields. We can see the vector plots. Now it is magnetized along the X direction. And this is the magnitude. Now this soft magnet is magnetized again. So we want to see how that EPM will behave here with both magnets. So we use this as a source model and then we create a target model. So in this target model, we will map the fields from the source model into this target model for this soft magnet. So what we should do here is first make sure that we are not compute any demagnetized or magnetized operating points. Second, we want to map the fields. So we need to map the magnetization fields. 
So we link these two Maxwell models together from the source model to the target model. And also make sure that we select the parts that we want to map. Then we can run the simulation here after it is done. We can check the fields for these parts. So as expected, now both of the magnets are magnetized in the same direction. And this is the magnitude. So we should expect that the flux in the air gap will be high. Therefore, the force should be very high. Let's take a look at the force. Now we can see that the force in the y direction here is uh, 93 newtons, which is very high compared to previously, which was almost zero. So we can say that in this case, this EPM is now turned on. Now this EPM is turned on. How can we turn it off again? We just need to apply a different current. So now we applied a negative current in those coils. And after running the simulation, we can check the fields. You can see now this soft magnet is magnetized along the minus x direction. Now, since this soft magnet is magnetized again, we can use this in the target line. Similarly, all we need to do is to make sure that we link the source design and the target design together. And then we can run the simulation. After it is done, we can check the fields. This is the magnitude. You can see the fields at the bottom plate is very small. And if we look at the vectors, we can see most of the fields are concentrated between these two magnets. And to make sure that it is off, we can also check the forces as well. We can see that both of the x direction force and y direction force are almost zero. So now we can say that this EPM is off. As a quick summary, the EPM can be turned on and off by controlling the current. Initially, there is no current. So the flux will mainly be between these two magnets. And then there will be very little flux between the air gaps. And therefore, the force on this plate will be almost zero. And then we can apply a current pulse to the windings. And then this soft magnet will be demagnetized and magnetized in the opposite direction. In this case, there will be a lot of flux going into these two air gaps. And as a result, the force on this plate will be quite large in the y direction. If we want to turn it off again, we just need to apply the opposite current pulse. And then this soft magnet will be demagnetized again and then magnetized in the opposite direction. And now in this case, the flux will again be mainly between these two magnets. And therefore, the force on this plate will be almost zero in x and y directions. All these behaviors can be modeled and simulated in ANSYS Maxwell. Thanks for watching.